Welcome to the Crazy Town Podcast. I'm Jonas. And I'm TNT9. I'm ID Explosive One. Let's crack into another one. Baby. Yeah, we cracked in. So We up here. TNT. We out here. What's up? Are you familiar? Yep. I don't like to bring up sports a lot, but I'm this is like two that. in a week, but whatever. One was about Swift. Colin Kaepernick. Oh, all right. Yeah, let's hear it. Why? Well, I mean, what do you got to say about when I say that name? Why do you got? The, why do you got it so deep? Because I already know the story. I know about him trying to get back in the league. Yeah. So, like, I mean, I mean, the whole thing started with him taking a knee years ago, right? And he kind of got let's, blackballed. Let's, let's, get, let's get let's get it right, man. Tell the whole story. Don't tell part of it. If you're gonna tell the whole story, tell it all. Tell wow. the whole story. Okay. So Colin Kaepernick was the quarterback the for what? 49ers. For made a, 49ers. Made a big ass contract. He had a big ass contract. Decent quarterback. Oh yeah, he was. A, he was. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Like, Pretty good quarterback. Good enough that like even when he slipped, he could still be a backup starter. He started. Oh, he was a he, star. Yeah, he was a star quarterback. Yeah, he was top enough. ten probably. Okay, and so when the George Floyd when the George George Floyd incident occurred, he decided to take a knee on the field. He was a, he was the guy, the figure. He was the first the one first to take one. a knee during the national anthem, and thus he became a figurehead for the movement. I think. I don't know if I should even put my own thoughts into it. We can get into that in a minute here. But he became a figurehead for the movement. Ended up being... I don't know how he got out of the league. I don't know if his contract ran out or he got cut or something. I don't remember I don't exactly remember. what happened. I think he got cut from the league because he ended up suing and actually obtaining and winning the uh, the lawsuit. Um but regardless, or, or it might have been because of the blackballing. Regardless, he was unable to uh, f find a position on any other team. Yeah, he couldn't, not even as a backup. Yeah. And well, I lot. think he was cut maybe for cap space, they said, you know, because his yeah. contract was so big or he yeah. got hurt or something. But then, like, the man probably today is still better than some of the backup quarterbacks that yeah, are in the league. Yeah, definitely better than Tim Couch. I mean, um, he's not in the league right now, though. <laughs> <laughs> definitely better than Brady Quinn. Sure, exactly. <laughs> But either way, um, so recently he wrote an open letter, right? To the Jets. Because Aaron Rodgers got hurt. Yep. Yeah, he wrote an open letter offering to come and, like, yeah. jo ask, join their practice, practice squad. squad. Not even the team. Not even the and team. in the letter, he was like, I know you're facing some mobile quarterbacks, so and so, so and so, so and so. I'd be more than honored to be on your team and help you prepare for them on practice. I'd mentor your young quarterback. I'm not trying to win his job. He's a good quarterback. If something happened, like da da da, like it was a very well written like yeah letter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was a weird. What do you what do you, what do you? I think don't understand why he hasn't. Somebody hasn't picked him up even as a backup. The whole time I didn't do. You, do you think it's a? I can't say it's a conspiracy, but what do you think the, the I think trepidation? He got what do you think the trepidation the team would feel? Even one that was like, I want to pick him up, but what do you think they're thinking? I think it's more it I think it's I think it's NFL political. Explain. I think that I think that the blackballing came from the league mm -hmm. and they were like do not sign this quarterback. So you think the league itself is behind it. They'll never they would never admit it. No. It's either the owners or the league oh. or both. Yeah, that's true because when you think about it the owners is a much smaller group of guys. So 32 like, guys. Yeah, it's 32 guys. Well, 31 because the Packers are, are publicly owned. Huh. So it's. So it's either the league heads. Either, like the league itself is like, listen, we don't want anything and, to do with this guy anymore. And honestly, that's just like a hand wave. That's a hand wave action. Oh, yeah. Like one person could be like, I don't think we should hire Colin Kaepernick well, anymore. And it's done. Well, what's it's not really funny hard. is the owner of the. Uh, what are they called now? Former Redskins. Commanders, whatever the hell team they are, mm. he was an owner. They're a very fickle group. He like they started like talking about how like things were going on in his organization. He started saying he was going to whistleblow about other owners. Lo and behold, guess what? He doesn't own the team anymore. He sold it. Mm. Yeah, you think he did that on his own accord? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, you're either one of us or you're not. Or you're one of the of them, right? And like you get thirty one other billionaires. Yep. Because you got to be a billionaire to own a football team. Yep. Yeah, so it's not just that you own football teams. It is a, it is, it's like an Illuminati type club. I bet. And I, you know what? Honestly, it it doesn't even it. 
I think of improv, and I'm like, improv is like an Illuminati type club. Is it? <laughs> yeah, to a certain extent. You got to think about the resources we're dealing with. We're dealing with the resources of we all do improv, so we have our in jokes. You have your your whole like your your whole behaviors and things that we can talk about that other people wouldn't understand. Almost like its own separate language. So when you when you take something as simple as improv and you're like, yeah, I could see it being like, you know, like a group of people, cultish in nature a little bit. Yeah. You guys are. We are. And then you say billionaires <laughs> that own football teams. Yeah. They're going to protect each other. They're going to have each other's back. They're going to speak the same language. And if you don't speak their language, they're going to push you out, whether by whether by suggestion. Like, because I, I guarantee how that went. They're like, hey, Dan Snyder, you should sell your team. But I don't want. You should sell your team. But I don't... No, you should sell your team. And yep. then it became, you will sell your team. Or be an adversarial, like, oh, yeah, we're having a big football owners meeting. And, uh, oh, we forgot to invite Danny. Yeah, we forgot to invite Danny. <laughs> yeah. But, like, but it is anything where yeah. a bunch of billionaires are involved, yeah. it's more than just... There's more. It's more than face value. It'd be absolutely terrifying to realize that I'm in a room with 16 other guys who could ruin my life with like the wave of their hand. They could be like, "Uh, I need that guy's life ruined tomorrow," and he has a team of people who could. Oh yeah, when, get when, it done. I mean, even if like you don't have any, say you were like the golden child, had you never did anything your whole life, they'd figure out a way to ruin your they, life. They could make some shit up. They got enough money to make you disappear. Yeah, all it takes is for one false sexual allegation, and you basically you're done. Especially when you're that prominent of a figure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and how much you got to pay a girl? You pay me a million dollars. I'm lying on everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you that I'm right now. I'm convincing myself it's the truth. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't even it, I don't even know what's a lie anymore because yeah. you paid me so much money. And this guy's sitting up here with a million millions. Yeah, okay, good a, job. A million millions. <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah dude it's it's but i but i honestly and like and i and i don't know i've never met the guy maybe he's a complete pompous a-hole i mean yeah you know possible. what i mean football players have egos that's true so i mean granted what he did was for good purpose that doesn't mean he's not a piece of shit that 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 is true but we can't we can't put that on his jacket without knowing for right, sure exactly so i will say is that when i looked at the letter i, I hmm I kind of feel like I was disappointed that he would even want to go back. You know? I think more than any. Well, yeah. At that point, it's like you're still hitting up the girl that broke your heart. Like, five years later, yeah, you're like, yeah, hey, yeah. hey, what are you doing? Are you busy this weekend? And yeah. she's like, we haven't talked in five years. Yeah. And I don't know a business around that you could sue and they would still hire you. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, part of it might. You sued us, and now you're good. like, we want to hire just, you back? I mean, it's the money. They're, they're, I mean, homeboy that. could go play in the XFL. That, you know what? Like, that's an option. And I see. And now, look, I see is that the Jets are in a bad place because, like, who, who did, what do they do? Well, right. They, I mean, they, they got a backup. Get? They had a guy who they were going to get before Bruh, they had Far, yeah. but he ain't. I mean, not Far, but Rodgers, but he ain't Rodgers. Nah, and he ain't, even, he ain't even the other guy. You know what's really funny, though, about that is Brett Favre left the Packers and went to the Jets for one season. Yep. And then he went to the Vikings. So if. Aaron Rodgers goes there one season, gets hurt, and goes to the Vikings. I w that would just be like the epitome of funny. I Anyways, think, I don't think that's gonna happen. So I don't he ain't know. Coming back, I, I can't. I can't. On the same note, I cannot say is like because of the thing, the simple action of this man putting the knee down because he felt that an injustice was happening, that he became this figurehead. He became like he became synonymous with the movement. Of like, yo, we gotta stop killing people through through police violence, you know. Big, Which is big, a really great message to send. Wonder, wonderful thing to stand on. We shouldn't kill Americans with police violence. We or, shouldn't kill people. The police shouldn't kill people who exactly. aren't doing anything. Yeah, so, yeah. I and and I understand one. there was some controversy around it at the time, and that's fine. Maybe it was just. Well, hey, no, now it's been to court. It's guilty. It's it's yeah. proven that he was right. I think it was more around the verbiage more than anything else. Right, right. I can't. I feel like if I were put in that position, like imagine somebody did some ill shit to you, and I just decided to put my hand up, and then everybody was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna put my hand up too." This guy put his hand up. 
And then all of a sudden they're like, hand up guy. I'm on the news. I'm like, yo, I just put my hand up, man. I don't I just want to go to work. I just did what felt right for me in the moment. Yeah. I just want to go to work and make a check. And now you guys are calling me up. You're having me on radio shows. I'm on podcasts. But, but if that's interviews. how he felt about it, he could have he could have said, hey, stand back and stand down or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the time we have for today's episode. Please go to thecrazytown.com for Jonas. Oh, yeah.